ever get tired of cold starts? Nope. Actually, it's more like almost noon windmill. Well, I have, I don't know, a few hundred bushels of peas on a truck that I need to put back in a bin. But I gotta plug in a tractor and a truck before I can do that, so. waiting for those trucks to uh or truck and tractor to warm up to start i got a tire that is low on this truck so we pull it off see what's going on with it All right, now I gotta air it up a little bit. Probably have to use a water uh, hose or something like that just to uh, see if we get some bubbles. Maybe just a valve stem, something simple like that that needs tightening up. That doesn't uh, help find the leak, but it does keep the floor drain from filling up with dirt. Don't do that to a polished aluminum wheel. I'll we'll hit you with a hammer if you do. First, I'm going to check the valve stem and just make sure that that is not our problem. Does not look like that's bubbling on that side. Good there. Now we'll get the garden hose out. Tell you what, I ate too much lunch today. I think I hear it, but I don't see it. Think I found it. Looks like the bead is bubbling. So, that's convenient. I guess I will uh, break it down and clean the bead and see if that fixes it. Well, I broke the bead, wiped it out, heard it back up. Fixed it. White truck's out of the shop. I am gonna go see if that green truck will start now. I did end up putting a battery charger on it because it was showing low on the volts on the dash. And uh, I'm gonna go start the tractor up. Let that warm up for a bit. I bet it won't go yet. It's pretty, pretty dead. Nope. Yes, windmill. I have told them that they use Fast Egg 100 and they sign up for FBN that they will get a discount.
Okay, back to work. Oh, magnet. Back to work. Auger set up. Truck's actually running. Let's go dump it now. Just out on a Saturday afternoon stroll. Everything's going good, and then you catch a rut. This part's over here, though. She's stuck. What do, you, what do you have to say for yourself now? <laughs> me? Yeah. Excuse me? Thanks, Greg. Even though it's a John Deere, thanks. All right, we are back to home, and as you can see, let's go move. All right, like I was saying, we're able to haul today. The elevator has taken in enough uh, lower moisture wheat that now one of these high moisture loads, they can absorb that and it won't uh, raise their average, so, you know, it's, that high or whatever so you see it's kind of peaked up like that that kind of makes me think that it's going to be another wet load that's the people ask kind of want to know what our trucking situation is and car details and all that it's about 50 miles from this bin yard to the elevator there's a closer elevator but this one is taking feet feet right now so that's how we're hauling there this truck 1996 Kenworth W900, the Detroit, the 13th speed. I think it's like a 2000 and, I don't know, 15 Wilson triple axle. And uh, this one's pretty nice. It has two of the rear axle lift, reverse traps, fenders, loaded up pretty nice. Um, I really like pulling this trailer. It's a nice trailer. So, got my stuff and we'll go get on the road. Well, so I've been bowing, pulling in here, so I just had to show you what was going on. Pull in the elevator here, they have a uh, probe that they run from inside the elevator, remote control. They'll probe the truck, and uh, then we pull on and weigh and unload, come back around, grab our, our ticket. And uh, this one was a little wet, so moisture went up from, I think it was, yes, the last load I hold was 16.3, now this one's 16.7. So we're gonna switch it in, try pulling the load out of that. I know this, what we're, what I just loaded was the wettest stuff we did cut this harvest, so it's going to get drier from here. Well, I just talked to the elevator manager and they took in more wet uh, wheat than, I, than he was planning on today. So uh, he says no more until we can bring 14.5 or lower. I don't think I have any wheat that's under 14.5, so I'll have to wait. Well, we have better quality stuff that's not feed wheat that's that dry, but this feed wheat stuff's all pretty wet. Yeah, pretty wet. Saw the forecast for snowfall for the next week, and it's saying 10 to 14 inches of snow for here. Uh, up to this point, we've been real lucky that we haven't had too much snow that's stuck around. It's melted off pretty quick, and that's been good because we can still get around and do things. But uh, I got a couple of haystacks that are not close to a maintained road or like a county road that will stay open for a while. So uh, I'm going to go plug in a tractor. We'll get those unloaded, get the truck hooked up. To the trailer and then tomorrow morning when the ground's all firmed up again we will uh, start moving some of them haystacks <laughs> anybody ever get tired of cold starts nope well i ended up bringing this trailer into the shop we got an issue where the lights are only working on one side of the, the trailer the clearance lights are so well i've been screwing around for an hour or more tracing everything down. I got down to this point and this light was just a little bit dim and the rest along the side were dead. Broken wire right there. We'll fix that. Then I think if this truck's ready to go. Ta-da! Kill the shades dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh.
catching a ride. All right, here is where we are putting the uh, bales. They came from about two miles uh, east of here, and we really don't want to have to plow snow to get to them later when we sell them, so we brought them here to the yard. Well, kind of the yard, the yard's over there. But we can just get on the road right here. So it'll work good. Uh, we can plow some snow out of here if we need to to load a truck later on. So, say it's for sale. If you're looking. Waiting. Sure. Gonna be generator and tell what we're gonna do. Four. Is this videoing? Um. Yes. <laughs> oh, yep. Yeah. So I stop the video. Sure. Okay, so right now we are stacking bales in our pasture, right? Yep. From on the truck. Truck. to go meet with the crop adjuster for the crop insurance adjuster I should say and uh, had a few fields that were borderline going to be a loss and then the price uh, changed in the crop insurance it's kind of complicated if you have determined yield and the price drops down your your guaranteed yield will drop up jump up a little bit so that's what happens we had a couple fields of canola that were close and then one field of wheat that because of the quality of the, all the rain, that quality had dropped and the price um, gets changed on that too and, and it, crop insurance was complicated. Well I forgot that the shop was coming out today to do a combine inspection. This one's done, I'm going to put it in a shed. There's just always something to change your plans for the day. And now for combine number two. Well, next stack we got to move. We're going to take it about four miles over to the highway there at the vineyard. I uh, brought the spears for the MX200 along and the four-wheeler. I'm going to run the four-wheeler over, bring the tractor here. The tractor's plugged in and uh, I'll be back with the tractor. I'm not going to hold the camera while I drive. It's like 10, 10 degree wind chill. So, yeah, see you in a bit. And I'm back. Made with the tractor. Didn't freeze it down. Let's take a smaller load this first load. Just uh, make sure the roads aren't too soft anywhere. There's still some water I gotta go down. We'll see how it goes. I got all the bales on the truck that were left on this load. I'm going to run the tractor back and bring the four-wheeler to the truck now. Take the truck home. All right, last load is stacked and uh, elevator just called and they are gonna possibly have canola cars at the elevator this evening. I'm loaded, it's 4.30, I haven't heard from the elevator yet, so I'm guessing this load's going in on uh, Friday, so tomorrow's Thanksgiving and uh, I'm going to haul in, they're not going to be working in either, so, uh, yeah, happy Thanksgiving. I don't want to be late, but hopefully it was a good one.